in the Bible. And our, our goal today is to understand that God looks on the heart of a person and not what the person looks like on the outside. Um, and that's a, a lesson for all of us that uh, the true person that each one of us is is what's on our inside. What is our character? Who we are? How do we treat others? How do we treat people? How do we love others? That's such an important thing that if we are going to represent Jesus Christ to the world, that we really have to be able to love other people and let them see our love that comes from within us. And so we want to understand what it means to serve God and love him with all of our heart uh, and to know that we need to love other people exactly the same way that we are loved by Jesus Christ. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how Jesus responded to some of the leaders in his day. Uh, and so the question is, if you uh, knew that your parents had one rule that was the more important rule than any other thing they had in the house, any other, any other uh, rule that they had, the most important rule that your parents have, um, would you do your best to follow them and, and to obey that rule? You know, whatever that is. Uh, maybe that's a good discussion point for you and your mom and dad is, hey, what's the most important thing you want me to do as your child, as your son or your daughter? What's the most important thing? And discuss that and talk about that and see what that means. Well, uh, you know, God has some very important rules in the Bible. And we're going to talk a little bit about those. We're going to be in Mark chapter 12. So if you have a Bible, you might want to open up to Mark chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 28 uh, through verses 34. And so now Jesus has been in the temple and he has been talking to uh, the religious leaders, the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees and the scribes and, and all of the, the people that were uh, really knew the Bible very well at that point, the Old Testament. They knew it frontwards and backwards. Um, they were those who had looked at each thing in there. They memorized all the important things like all the laws of, of the Hebrew children at the time, the, the Israelites. And, um, you know, at this point in time, they had 16, excuse me, they had 613 commandments that they followed uh, in, in the time that Jesus was alive. 613 commandments, that's a lot. And what they did was they decided that for each letter of the 10 commandments, they would come up with a law. So I guess if we went through and looked at it, when you add up all the uh, words in the, in, um, in the 10 commandments, there are 613 letters. And so they had a law for each one of those. And uh, so they tried to find uh, something that they could represent to the people of Israel. So that's a lot, right? And so they were always trying to trick Jesus and, and, uh, and, and kind of mess him up and ask him really hard questions. And Jesus most often would reply to them by using scripture. And so... When they would hear him respond, boy, they didn't have an answer for him. They couldn't come back at him again. So they tried a different way. And they were always trying to trick him up. And they were always trying to make him uh, fail. And so he had been in this big discussion with, um, in the temple with these, with these guys. And if you go back and, and you read the, the last couple of, uh, of chapters, you can see what he's doing. And they're asking him all these questions. And so he begins to talk to them and tell them stories and parables in order to describe that. So reach Mark chapter 11 and Mark chapter 12. And, uh, you know, they ask him all these questions and he's always able to respond correctly. And so when we get to verse 28 in Mark chapter 12, it says, And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which this scribe is now asking Jesus a question, which commandment is the most important of all? That's a pretty good question. I don't think there's any trickery there. I don't think there's anything too subversive or too trying to trip him up. But he answers the question. He says, Jesus answered in verse 29, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all your heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And then Jesus saw that he answered wisely and said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Now you might say, Pastor Jerry, why was that such an important thing? Well, the important thing here is how Jesus responded to him. Remember a few moments ago, I said to you that, that most often Jesus would respond to these religious leaders from the Old Testament, from the Bible. And so when he responds to this scribe asking him this very important question, what is the greatest commandment of all? He actually uses his answer that, the, that the, those religious leaders would have been very, very familiar with. And every devout Jewish person would have heard those words and knew immediately what he was talking about. If you go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy and you look in uh, chapter 11 of the book of Deuteronomy, and I have it right here, um, and uh, you, you look in, in that passage of scripture, uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, I believe it is uh, verses 8. Uh, hold on a second, let me find it. Uh, I'm getting a little bit messed up here, but anyway. Um, when you look at that, uh, they would know uh, the, these passages of Scripture. I'm going to find it for you here in just a second. I know it's in my notes here somewhere. It's um, chapter 11, and uh, here we go. Let's see. Therefore, keep my commandments. He's telling them to keep his commandments. Um, I will find it here shortly. Uh, I just got to find my notes. Anyways, while I'm looking for that, I'll keep going. But the important thing is um, that this was what was known uh, as the Shema. And uh, so there were a couple different reference points in the Old Testament where they use this. And that is to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, uh, with all your soul, and, um, and to keep all those commandments, and, uh, and that you will follow that. And so... What it, what it was, was a mantra that they would talk about, or a thing that they would repeat sometimes twice a day, where they would go and they would say this prayer, and the, they would say this in the form of a prayer, and then they would even um, actually put it on uh, what you would call a, a phylactery. And a phylactery was a little, um, small uh, box, I guess, and they would put it, um, on their forehead or they would put it on their right hand and they would put this in there and they would wear that in the morning and in the evenings and they would say this. And so let me look here. Uh, yes, it's Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 13 through um, verse uh, 21. So let me go back and look at that. Here it is. So this is where Jesus is referencing from. And there's also another place in the book of Numbers and also in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, they, the, these words are very similar. So starting in verse 13, it says, And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your grain, your new wine and your oil, and I will send grass in your fields for your livestock, that you may eat and be filled. Filled. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them, lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there would be no rain, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart, and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts post of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land 
of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. And so you have these, this is where Jesus is referencing from when he says, um, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And so he's referencing this thing that these men would hear and would completely understand where he's coming from immediately. And it says, very well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then the second one is this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so Jesus is teaching here the greatest commandments of the Bible. It's not about the other things, which are very important, right? Uh, the, the gentleman that he's referring to, this, the, the uh, scribe, even responds to him. If we look down uh, in verses 32, it says, And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love one's neighbor as yourself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And what he's saying there is that Jesus always wanted us to have a loving heart uh, more than any of the other stuff that we do, more than any other things that we show how we worship God, how we relate to Jesus. The most important thing is that we love God with all of our hearts and know that he is one and that we love him with all our hearts, our souls, our mind, and our strength. That is the greatest commandment. And the second one, is that we love our neighbor as ourself. You know, we live in a, in, in, in a time that's pretty crazy right now with having to be told to stay at home. I've mentioned that a bunch of times and there's other things going on in our country and in our world that cause a lot of people hurt, cause a lot of people pain and, and, and people are hurting now with a lot of different things happening. I'm sure if, if you've seen the news or if you've heard your mom and dad in discussions, you know that there's there's evil in the world and uh, people are being treated unjustly and, 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 and terribly and poorly, um, whether it comes to job loss or businesses being shut down or, or burned with fires or other, other things that are happening with people who are being hurt because um, the color of their skin. They're, they're, those things are grand injustices. And as Christians, we need to respond to that by showing God's love and by telling people that we care about them, we care about who they are internally because that's what Jesus cares about, right? That's what we talked about at the very beginning of the lesson, that Jesus cares about what's on the inside of a person, not what's on the outside. And so we might see people that aren't like us. Um, they, they may be much more wealthy than we are, or they may be very, very poor. Um, they may have a, a speak a different language. Um, they might have a different skin color. Any of those things, those aren't the things that are important, right? The things that are important is what Jesus is telling this man uh, in our lesson, this scribe, is that we are to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our understanding, and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So the question is, do we care about ourselves? Yeah, most of us care about ourselves quite a bit, right? And so how we get treated is, is important. How do we treat ourselves? Do we make sure we take care of ourselves? Do we make sure that we do the things that we need to do for ourselves to give ourselves the best opportunity to be successful in life? Yeah. So we want to be able to treat our neighbors the same exact way as we treat ourselves. And that means we want to treat uh, we're treating ourselves well and we want to treat them well too and so it's so important um, and again the scribe was impressed with Jesus was remember they looked down on Jesus because they knew that he wasn't um, a student they knew that he wasn't a Pharisee or he wasn't a scribe and he wasn't a Sadducee he wasn't a religious leader at all and yet his intellect when it came to knowing truth in the scripture was on par with him. Why? Well, because he was God, for one thing. He was God's son. And so he knew all of this stuff. Um, and so it says that you have spoken well said, and you've spoken well. And so Jesus then responds to him by saying, you are not far from the kingdom of God. 
Well, what do you think Jesus meant by that? When, when he hears the response, let's read the scribe's response again in verse 32. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and, there's, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now, when he says whole burnt offerings and sacrifices, um, what he might be alluding to there is the fact that when you would come once a year to the temple, you would sacrifice a lamb, and it was an entire uh, animal that you would sacrifice for the sin of your family, and that you would be covered by that uh, sacrifice for one year. That was part of the law uh, that they were under at the time for, for Jewish people. And uh, there were other smaller um, burnt offerings that you could offer throughout the year for different things. And there's a whole, again, there's 613 commandments and ways to do things. Uh, if, you, if you ever want to read the book of Numbers or Deuteronomy, that those are not easy books to read. But they go through all of those reasons why they do the things that they do. And the laws that they follow and the commandments that they keep. Um, so there were other times when you might only offer a small offering for different reasons. So when he says a whole burnt um, sacrifice and offering, he meant that loving God and loving your neighbor and loving your fellow man would far outweigh even the best offering you could bring to sacrifice. You know, um, when Saul was, was the king of Israel, he was doing things out of turn. He was making different mistakes. And Samuel comes to him and says, why did you do what you did here? And, and it was offering a sacrifice. And he wasn't supposed to do it. Samuel was supposed to do it. And he came and said, why did you do this? Why did you offer these sacrifices? And he said, because that's what God wants. And he said, Samuel, and Samuel said to him, no, Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. Follow God's plan. And God's plan is uh, for us to love him and to love others. And so when Jesus says, you are not far from the kingdom of God, what does he mean? And what he was saying to him is, you understand the truth. You are right there. You have the knowledge that you need to love God and love others. You speak well. You were so close. But what was the thing? Um, his willingness to listen to Jesus and understanding that he was close to believing that Jesus was the Messiah and was a Savior. He wasn't there yet. Now, what we don't know from this story and from the historical records is whether this scribe ever came to know Christ personally as a Savior, but he understood what Jesus was saying to him. And so that lesson there, that little nugget of truth is, the lesson in that is that we often know what Jesus is saying. We often can hear and we can read his word and we can listen to what he has to say and we can acknowledge it and we can say, yep, I understand it. But do you know it in your heart? Do you embrace it in your life? Do you follow him from a place of total belief in who he is and that he is the savior of the world? And so that's what I wanted to share with you this morning is that Jesus tells us the two most important commandments to love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and to love others as you love yourself. And as if you're loving God with the, the, the compassionate way that you're supposed to be, then you're gonna have compassion, you're gonna have kindness in your heart to those around you because you want them to know the truth and that Jesus loves them and that Jesus wants to know them intimately and have a personal relationship with him. Um, and, in, and that goes to everyone, it's why we support uh, our Great Commission partners um, that you've got to meet and see over the different times when they're home from other countries. They go to other places around the world to share the love of God with people who don't know it yet. And they go to places where people are different than they are. They, they talk in a different language. They look differently. They dress differently. They eat different foods. We've, we've talked about those things in the past. And yet they go there to share the one common thing that brings us all together, and that is God's love. And so as you go about your week and as you are out and about and doing different things, and uh, for most of you, school is over, um, you're done, 
Uh, I know there's a few school districts that are going to keep on going, um, but a lot of you are finished and completed, and so your, your days are now more open than ever, um, but you're not able to do some of your normal things. Uh, there's still opportunity for you to share the love of God with your family, with the, maybe the people that are close in your neighborhood, um, that you're able to interact with safely. Um, share God's love with them. Let them know that they are loved by the creator of the universe uh, who wants us all to be with him together in heaven forever. So those are awesome, awesome good news things that you can be sharing with your neighbors and your friends. All right, so I hope you have a great week. Uh, we're going to keep doing this. Eventually, we are going to get back to church. Uh, June 14th is when we were, we're going to start our services again. It's going to look a little different for a little bit. Um, and, uh, and Pastor Dan's going to be making those announcements. So make sure your parents are checking out uh, the services that are online. And even you too can go in and check it out. And we'll be giving you more detailed information there a little bit. Um, and stuff's moving along. Um, there's some things we're still planning on doing, and we'll let you know as we move forward about that. Um, and uh, hopefully we will have a great summer together that we, when we are able to gather back together. All right, so I'm praying for all of you. I hope you have a great week. God bless you, and we'll be talking to you soon. Have a great day.